Picture a job description that features part-time work as a caregiver, a nurse, a tutor, a mentor, a personal cheerleader, and an assistant. Some other duties may include being a chauffeur, short order cooking, and laundry services. It sounds like an almost impossible job, right? But it's one performed by millions of women around the country each and every day. We're talking, of course, about moms. I'm Christina Watkins. To celebrate all that moms do, we're bringing you a special program from Stitch, which is all about telling heartwarming stories from all around the country. We'll introduce you to a foster mom who goes above and beyond. Witness a reunion decades in the making and take a walk through a beautiful tribute to a mother. In our first story, a woman received a once in a lifetime gift from her daughter for Mother's Day. Here's Kelly Sasso with more. Kathleen Rogers asked her daughter for one priceless Mother's Day gift last year, but her daughter surprised her with two. I actually wasn't even going to walk until my mom asked me for Mother's Day present if I would walk for her. Jesse Rogers took the gift a step further. And you're gonna be walking with me. What? Jesse's mom, Kathleen, was unable to walk in her own Southern New Hampshire University graduation in 2017, so her daughter arranged for the surprise. I'm feeling overwhelmed, elated, shocked, and now she's given me this second chance. Like, I just didn't think I was gonna be able to do it. And she did, just steps behind her daughter. She's just given me a great life and has done everything for me. And to hear that she regretted not walking at her graduation was really tough. Um, so if I got that chance, I wanted her to get that chance as well. I'm more proud because I'm doing it with her, because I'm so proud of her. All too often, a mother's personal endeavors take a back seat to motherhood. But these women decided to change that and in the process created a sisterhood. It's hard enough doing something without skates on, and now you're doing it by putting skates on and you're going on ice, and it's terrifying. And I hate to say it, once you put the excuses back and you go out on the ice, it's it's your time. And it, in, for a mom, anytime we can get away like that, <laughs> it'll be worth it. <laughs> My kid was a squirt in house hockey. You know, just like a regular hockey mom, I was in the stands. We all do the same thing, you know, go get the puck, move your butt. You know, we all scream at him. And after one of the games, he just kind of looked at me and he was like, mom, you can't tell me how to play hockey if you don't know how to play hockey. So I actually uh, signed up for a learn to skate. And I literally, with my friend Jen, skated with a bunch of five-year-olds and we just moved into learning how to play hockey. And then more moms were saying, you know, I really would like to try that. That's how Operation Hockey Mom started. Yo, I've got the bug. <laughs> I play probably more than my kid does right now. <laughs> I fell in love with it right away. I did so much so that I, I just want to do it all the time. And I want to play every game and every tournament and everything, but there's also the home life balance, I think that obviously takes precedence. A lot of these women do have kids who play hockey. My kids did not pick anything up as far as hockey goes. This is just something for me. I only have boys, so as a mom, it's kind of hard as they get older to have something that you have in common. He's gonna be a teenager pretty soon, so now he's kind of starting to trust me more than just his mom. You know, I'm kind of a hockey player now. Putting the pads on, I would say on Sunday nights for practice, it's a more laid back environment. We're just out here. We get to learn things. We're blessed to have two amazing coaches that donate their time, which is awesome. And the rink gives us some time here. But I would say for the tournaments or, or the games, it's a little turned up a little bit because it, that's a more co-ed environment and it's you, you get a little bit of a beast mode there. I changed completely. You know, I put all that stuff on and it's a lot of stuff. It's pounds of gear. But with each thing that I put on, I changed completely. You know, you've got all this stuff on, you got this helmet, and I have my goal, I've got my house, and it's a whole different ball game. All of the members, for the most part, have joined a team at some point. We do tournaments, we do leagues. It's just, we're all a big family. My favorite part of all of this whole experience would have to be the people that I've met, besides the fact that it's fun. You know, I didn't know these women, and now I know everything about them. They know everything about me. They know the good stuff. They know the bad stuff. 
and they don't care, you know, they just, they're, hockey's a great community. And I didn't know how great it was until I actually got kind of broke into it. Don't underestimate the strength of those hockey moms. In our next story, we meet a woman who became a similar testament to strength and tenacity when she received a rare diagnosis while she was pregnant. I think I was just numb because we didn't have any family history and later I found out there was no genetic mutations at all. So I just couldn't believe that, you know, this random lump turned out to be something so big and life-changing. At 19 weeks pregnant, Sarah Cannavai learned that what she thought was a pregnancy-related issue turned out to be more serious. She was diagnosed with a rare and aggressive form of breast cancer. We see probably about maybe three or four women a year who are pregnant who have breast cancer. It's best to treat these people while they're pregnant because if you wait till they deliver, breast cancer loves the extra hormones of pregnancy, so their cancer will get far worse quicker. So you have to do something while they're pregnant. He went through a right mastectomy and four rounds of chemo with me, all while in, in the womb. Sarah said she stayed positive, not only for herself, but for her child. It's possible to do both. You can fight cancer, you know, by day and mom by night. Her son Roman was born without any complications and Sarah finished her treatment six months after giving birth. And now she's considered cancer free. And he is the happiest baby I've ever met, and that's what everybody tells me that meets him, that he's just so happy and just full of life, and we just love him so much. The mothers we've seen so far have shown how fiercely and bravely they love their children through some of life's most difficult moments. This next story, it's no different. Though heartbreaking and bittersweet, this couple's story ends with an adorable bow on it. Laura Yoho and her soon-to-be husband, Nate, were both personal trainers and the picture of health. They were about to begin their life together when they received news no one wants to hear. If you were to take a step back and observe this, you wouldn't know that anything's wrong. If I'm ever having a bad day, if I, I just work out as hard as I can, then I'm, I'm good to go. In 2011, the couple received a devastating diagnosis. I found out that I have a tumor, a brain tumor. It's very, very bad. It's very serious, I guess you could say. Um, and there's only about a 5%, or I would say 2 to 5% that, that you're gonna be okay. The couple kept hoping, and Laura lived past the 18 months the doctors had given her, but she died in 2013. She knew that it was getting worse, and I could tell all of her family and everybody she was close to was there. Typically, obituaries summarize a person's life, but Laura's had a little something extra. It revealed a daughter yet to be born. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to show you how Laura's story continued. Welcome back to our celebration of motherhood. Laura Yoho was just 30 years old when she died of an aggressive form of brain cancer. She never got to experience motherhood, but her death didn't prevent her from becoming a mother. Her obituary revealed a surprise. She is survived, it read, by her husband, Nate, and her daughter, Carolyn, due to be born through surrogacy. Before Laura had even asked, her childhood best friend was preparing to help her grant her final wish, to have a baby. She said, hopefully someday Nate and I will be able to have a child. And I said, well, if you ever have any trouble carrying a child, you know, I've done it twice. I know I can do it again. I'd be more than happy to do it for you. Said, oh, I've been going to the doctor and preparing myself for the past year, knowing that I was gonna carry this baby. And we were just like, wow. I really meant that. And so we cried and hugged and decided right then, I'm like, I'm ready and let's, let's get this going. Laura lived long enough to see her baby's first ultrasound and to learn that the baby was a girl. At her baby shower, she was surrounded by people that she knew would love her daughter even after she was gone. She said, you know, whatever happens, happens. A baby is a joy to all, no matter what. And I thought, you know what? And that's why I loved her so much. She just, she knew exactly what to say. And I said, that's right. There's nothing bad that could come out of your baby being here. Carolyn's birth was nothing short of emotional. She looks good. Oh. 
just got a piece of lore back to sell. Oh, I got part of my daughter back right now. It's awesome. The comparisons to the mother she'd never meet were immediate. There she is. Yeah, this is it. Life as a single dad would be difficult, but with all of the help that Nate had from family and friends, he knew one thing would be clear for Carolyn. She's gonna know how hard her mother tried to be there for her. <laughs> By her first birthday, it was already clear that Carolyn had inherited many of her mother's traits, including her tenacity. And now as she started school, Carolyn reminds her father of Laura every day in the little moments, like when Carolyn falls at the playground. She still gets back up and with a smile on her face, and, and it's kind of in the, the same story of, of Laura, you know, battling with her cancer. And although Carolyn said that she was nervous about starting school, like her mom, she has a plan. Just pretend I'm a princess. So you know you're ready to go? Yeah, I think. We're ready. Heartbreaking but triumphant story. It requires so much support and hope to get through such moments in life. Just like in our next story, where we meet a mother of six whose faith knew no limits in the face of tragedy. God chose her for this. I think he knew, number one, that she would make it through, and number two, that she wouldn't just make it through and not tell a story, not tell his story. We have a big family. We're kind of like the Brady Bunch, six kids all together. Riley is my youngest. Riley was very active in the dance team. They did a lot of competitions. We had high school football games every Friday night. My life was school, dance team, come home, do homework, wake up, do it all again. The night of the accident, Riley was going on her first date. We were at the airport watching planes fly in in a little observatory area, and a truck didn't have his lights on and didn't see us and just ran over my abdomen, stopped, and then ran back off. And about 9 o'clock, Spencer called me, and he was having a really hard time talking. I think he was in shock. I said, is she okay? Is she okay? Of course, I'm panicking. And he put the paramedic on the phone. I said, I'm Riley's mom. Is she okay? And he said, well, we're doing everything we can. She was in the hospital a total of 74 days. The injuries that she had led to other complications internally that we couldn't foresee happening. One thing led to another, and it just kept getting worse and worse. We kind of felt like she was never gonna get better. We just kept getting bad news. There were times in the ICU at night when she would be in pain and she would just literally start screaming out, God, please help me, God, help me. And we would just pray. Being in such a vulnerable state, I think put me in a situation where everything had to be reliant upon God. As her mom watching her get to a healthy state was the best thing I've ever seen and the worst thing I've ever seen all wrapped up in one. I've never been more proud of the person that she is. Watch her persevere through the darkest of times where she didn't even know she was gonna live through the night. The transition of coming out of the hospital and my doctor is pretty much saying, don't ever expect to run a race, not gonna happen. Dancing, maybe someday gonna be minimal. Coming out in the next year, going back onto my dance team and being able to dance was a blessing in itself. Then after that, I started getting into running, which I never thought I would go back to. I was just super thankful that I was even able to run a mile. Last year, I was called to a school where I had to run a half marathon to graduate. And I was like, obviously I can't do that. And I need a note to get out of it. And then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna run it. I was training and I was seeing how much I was actually capable of and how much I could prove the doctors are wrong, essentially. And I ran the half marathon. It's just been crazy that I've come this far and that I'm able to be healthy, I'm able to do all these things beyond whatever I ever thought I'd be able to do again. I want people to see how much their life can change in suffering if they have faith. If there's something bigger that they're living for than suffering is glorified and it's not just meaningless. Today, I kind of have a new perspective every day. It's just a matter of like thanking God that I'm breathing and that I'm here. With her boundless faith in a support system, Riley was able to regain her life and her purpose.
Sadly, not all children are born into that kind of support system, but all it takes is one person to change everything. And for more than 75 children, Maritza LaSalle is that one person. To me, family is very important, very important. So for me to keep the family together, keep the kids together, I mean, that's, that's just the best thing. When siblings in Central Florida are at risk of being separated, foster mother Maritza LaSalle steps in. I have seven kids with me right okay. now. She's been committed to keeping families together for more than 20 years. And in that time, she helped more than 75 children. In many ways, she's following in the footsteps of her parents, who, despite having seven children of their own, fostered countless more. And for Maritza, there's no such thing as too many children. And no one knows that more than Crystal and Chrissy, sisters who both have developmental disabilities and have been with Maritza for nine years. Well, I got so attached to them. You know, nine years of fighting to make sure they got everything, to make sure that everything was taken care of. You know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't let them go. I just couldn't. So Maritza adopted Crystal and Chrissy. I want to be there. You want to be there for now? Oh. Now Maritza can't adopt all the children, but what she can do and has done is show them that no matter where they go, their life has purpose and they are loved. Maritza reminds us there are many ways to be a mother and our next story proves that it's never too late to be one, not even 50 years late. Joy Sharer can hardly wait. She is about to meet her daughter. We have not seen each other for 52 years. The last time I saw her, she was just a little bit of baby. 52 years earlier, Joy made the hardest decision of her life. <gasps> Here comes a lot of people. She was a young mother of two in 1966 when her husband suddenly died and she could no longer support her daughter. Fearing for her life, she gave her over to an orphanage. I'm sure I'll know what she looks like. To Joy's surprise, after a lifetime of wondering what happened to her daughter, Marianne, one day she got a call from her daughter. Since reconnecting, Joy and Marianne talk often on the phone, but this is about to be the first time they meet in person. Join us after the break to see the moment that Joy finally meets her daughter face to face. Welcome back to our Mother's Day celebration. When we left off, Joy Sharer was waiting to meet the daughter that she had given up for adoption 52 years ago. I'm ready. After decades of searching, the moment has arrived. Oh, my God. <laughs> I looked for her for 30 years. I really did, 30 years. It's not easy. Oh, God. Don't cry. Don't cry. You're so right. Don't cry. As a mother of two now herself, Mary Ann says she understands her mother's choice. And if it wasn't for her selflessness, I wouldn't have all of that. So I absolutely have no anger at all. I felt that I was doing the right thing, you know, at that time. Would I do it over again? Definitely not. They can't change the past, but Marianne and Joy now have a second chance at a relationship. Our next story is also one about second chances, though they came at a heartbreaking cost. Devante Arias was killed by random gun violence when he was just 19 years old. His organs were able to save four lives, including Lodgie Catengold, who received Devante's kidney and heart. I really want to meet the person that receives his heart. My son was a genuine soul, a genuine soul. He was such, I am so proud to be his mom for 19 years. I was so fortunate. Once he was healthy enough, Lodgy and the hospital arranged to meet Devante's mother, Yolanda, in person. I have a second chance to enjoy life and do what things I really uh, have always wanted to do. And because I was so sick, I could not do all those. Yolanda was given the opportunity to hear something she hadn't heard in years, her son's heartbeat. This means so much to us, and I'm so grateful that it's you. Yolanda received comfort in knowing that her son lives on in others. But sometimes when we're grieving, that comfort isn't found in others. It's only grown within ourselves. It's peaceful. After working all day, this is where I want to be. For Holly Seelig, this picturesque retreat is more than a butterfly sanctuary. It is a tribute to her mom, who she lost to breast cancer. 
The seeds of inspiration were planted during the funeral when Holly had an unusual encounter with a butterfly. I walked over to it, just not even thinking, just put my hand out and it crawled on my finger and it sat there. The butterfly stayed there for the rest of the service. And when Holly got home that day, she knew what she wanted to do. She began growing milkweed in her backyard to attract monarch caterpillars. And in no time, the milkweed was everywhere, and so were the butterflies. Being out here, it's like I'm continually getting reminded that I'm not alone, that she is still with me. And in her place of comfort, she has now learned a life lesson. There is a reason they call it Mother Nature. Like a mother, nature gave Holly the peace and the comfort that she needed. Before we leave you, we have to honor some very, very special moms. Military moms, we thank you, and we wish you a happy Mother's Day. Peace.